I'm gonna read to you guys what I think it's safe to say is the most profound and powerful encounter mankind has ever had with the third person of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit. It's from Acts chapter two. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly, a sound came from heaven like the rush of a mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them tongues as of fire, distributed and resting on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. You know, this event was not some quaint little religious happening. Right? These aren't images like, you know, a cartoon dove or, you know, fat little angels with bows and arrows. What we see here are power images, like wind filling the inside of a house, fire coming down from heaven and resting on people. People rushing out into the streets with joy and boldness and proclaiming the gospel, even knowing it could have gotten them killed, but that didn't stop them. And they were speaking in other languages, and everybody understood them. It's a total miracle. The Holy Spirit changed the apostles that day forever, and through them, changed the world. Over these next few lessons, we're going to talk about who the Holy Spirit is and what He wants to do in your life. I'm outside of the city of Rome, and this aqueduct that you see behind me is not just an amazing piece of engineering. It was a critical and essential element to Roman life. Without the water that this incredible system provided, Rome may never have become the powerful empire that it was. This aqueduct, and others like it, provided life-giving water to over a million Roman residents. Today, we're going to be talking about the Holy Spirit. And what better place to start than with the symbol of water. Not just the water that provides for our physical needs, but the water that provides for our spiritual needs. That is, the sacrament of baptism. The catechism lists a number of symbols for the Holy Spirit. But the first one is water. That's because through the waters of baptism, we are given birth into the divine life of God. Life is Another symbol of the Holy Spirit is the image of fire. Fire gives light, energy, and it also purifies. The Holy Spirit is the light of God's truth in a world filled with spiritual darkness. Newly mined gold, when it comes out of the ground, is filled with impurities and it is put through fire so that those impurities are removed. The more impurities that are removed, the purer it becomes. The Holy Spirit works like that within us as well, especially in the sacrament of reconciliation that removes the impurity of sin from our souls. The more we live in holiness, the more we live in unity with the will of God, the more the Holy Spirit can work in us to truly be a powerful witness for God's life in this world. Another symbol of the Holy Spirit is the wind. Now this is a great one. Because like God, the wind you know is there, you can feel its presence, but you can't see it. God in the Holy Spirit comes to us like a gentle breeze, like he did at the incarnation where Mary said yes to becoming the mother of God or with the force of a hurricane, like when he came upon the apostles in the upper room at Pentecost. In order to move us more deeply into the Father's heart, the Holy Spirit can act as that gentle nudge, like with a talk with your parents. Or the Holy Spirit can comfort us in difficult times, like with the death of a loved one. Another way we could come to know the Holy Spirit is through the creed that we pray at Mass. In that creed, we say that the Holy Spirit proceeds from the Father and the Son. 
God himself lives in an eternal, life-giving communion of love and intimacy. In that Holy Spirit, he invites us to share in the very life of God. In his first letter, the Apostle John tells us that God is love, and he who lives in love lives in God, and God lives in him. In that creed, we also say that the Holy Spirit is the Lord and giver of life. Without the Holy Spirit in our life, we are dead spiritually. Whether we're praying, whether we're working, whether we're doing homework, whether we're talking to our parents, no matter what it is, the Holy Spirit is always there for us. Like this aqueduct that provided life-giving water to millions of Roman residents, the Holy Spirit is our pipeline, our lifeline to union with God himself.